Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Nicole Leon. I am the Director of Admissions of La Escuela, and welcome to the Middle School Information Session. Um, I'm also going to introduce my partner, Paula. Buonasera a tutti and welcome. It's so nice to see some familiar faces. Now, some of you have come to, to Torah campus. It's good to see you again. Thank you for coming. Um, yes, my name is Paolo Barbera. I'm the Associate Director of Admission here at La Scuola and um, also parent of a graduate um, for the first class who graduated. And without further ado, I would like to um, show you um, a video which was created uh, by a graduate under the very expert guide of Chiara Fornetti, who, who is a design teacher. And uh, this was uh, done during the design class, which is very unique to La Scuola and the IB program. Enjoy. Above all, a La Scuola teacher is a student is an inquirer. This is not a place where teachers follow the textbook. Uh, it is a place where we model a kind of a way of learning in a joint group. As a person, I think I'm growing because of my student. They challenge me every day and I take up that challenge. I prepare myself. Maybe I fail sometimes. I'm not saying always I'm succeeding with that. But yes, it gives me a growth every day. Every day I'm growing and they come up with beautiful challenges. <laughs> it's so much more than just a school. It's, it's a community. It's a, it's a safe space. It's an academic learning center place. It's, it's just, it's amazing. We're not just learning, we're not just students, but we are also teachers. And that means that you will inspire others, that you will teach others um, how to be learners, communicators. And I think this is something that's very special about also, as well, um, the, the journey of coaching uh, the International Baccalaureate. I don't think the world is ready, actually, frankly, for La Scuola graduates, but I think you will be able to accomplish everything that you set your mind to because you have been, you are special and you have been through a very special community and a very special environment. And I can't wait to see what you're going to bring to the world. A school where students and teachers meet, share ideas on on how really the world works, right? And, and, and how and how there's nothing without joy. Yeah, the sense of joy. Yeah. You can explore every single thing that, that you love about the world and then take it outside of school and turn it into something that you really, really love. And you get to learn all these cool things and community. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed that video. I am going to now introduce our head of school, Valentina Imbeni. Buonasera a tutti. Uh, um, this video always uh, makes me a little teary and I'm still waiting for the time when it doesn't. Um, it hasn't happened yet. Um, I apologize if you hear uh, some background noise. Um, I have uh, two teenage sons, uh, one of which is at home and decided three minutes ago to bring all of his friends home and we live in a two bedroom apartment. So it, it's, it, it's quite a squeeze over here, but this is, this is what uh, students do and he's a La Scuola graduate and, and he's, he's embracing uh, life and the world to its fullest. Uh, the one thing I think that I hope you saw through this video that was really created by students under the expert guidance of some teachers is that our students really learn across languages, across cultures, and also across dis disciplines. This is really truly unique. And I think the openness that they get through this approach and also the, the love of learning that hopefully will last them a lifetime uh, is a gift that we really hope to give them. They are the protagonists of the learning process. They own their learning. Uh, they take it very seriously. Um, and they ask very, very challenging questions. And I think 
all of, of I mean, if you have children, you know the children always ask difficult questions, but I think what's important is that those questions are taken uh, very, uh, very seriously. And if you want to go to the next slide, uh, so how do we do this? Um, how do we deliver on what I just shared with you? Um, I think we were born as a, as a school that had a love and a passion for language, language immersion. Uh, we happen to be Italian, but I think any language immersion program is, is beautiful and wonderful for students. And um, we have kept that love of languages by also introducing uh, Spanish and, and having a Spanish track in our middle school program. And then as a pedagogy, we were always, uh, uh, we want, always wanted to embrace the Reggio Emilia approach to education where you have, again, your child as the protagonist, protagonist of the learning, um, a unique attention to the environment and aesthetics, and, and this love of, of uh, inquiry, the really deep, deep inquiry. Uh, as we grew uh, to a K-8 program, uh, the International Baccalaureate Framework was only natural for us. Um, it's an incredible framework that supports students age 3 to 18 and beyond. I'm not the expert here, so I will let the expert uh, speak about it in, in depth later. But what I think was always unique uh, uh, for me about the IB is this attention to the development of the child. It's a uniquely developmentally appropriate uh, approach. Um, starts off with the transdisciplinary learning and then a hands-on learning and an attention to inquiry. Gets a little more uh, traditional, if you allow me to use this word, in the middle years program where uh, discipline are uh, distinct and so it becomes an inter interdisciplinary approach. And then if you're uh, fortunate to end up in an IB school that offers the diploma program, uh, it, it becomes in a way uh, more academic and traditional when students are ready for it. Um, so uh, I think for me personally and for many, I think other parents um, and students around the planet, I think this is unique. And we can also relate to uh, over 5,000 schools around the globe, which is, uh, I think, quite special in a world that's becoming more and more connected. And I think um, I would like now to leave you to uh, the expert on this approach, uh, Mr. Douglas Launi, the director of our middle school and upper elementary. Grazie Vele. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being with us tonight. <clears throat> I just want to speak briefly about the Middle Years program, the IB Middle Years program, and the big idea of our middle school. Uh, as I said in the, the video you watch, uh, in the Middle Years program, like the big idea is that students in every subject area learn how to inquire. They learn how to ask and answer their own questions. They learn how to find out for themselves. And I don't mean we don't have a written curriculum and teachers aren't teaching a program. We're only delivering our school program. We're transferring foundational knowledge and foundation to students. The unique benefit, the unique move that we make in our inquiry-based program is that students develop that foundational knowledge in ways that are connected to real-world contexts and to students' own personal interests. And that's what I hope you're going to hear tonight uh, as teachers and students talk about their learning experiences at La Scuola. We're not a school that relies heavily on textbooks or standardized tests. Students develop knowledge and demonstrate their knowledge through a really wide range of activities. I mean, thinking about being in school today, students were podcasting, students are writing and performing theater, students are designing and running experiments. And what that feels like in a real way is it feels like a liberal arts college experience. But of course, it's not a college, it's a middle school. And uh, that means we're also involved in a lot of explicit instruction in specific skills and approaches to learning from how to craft a focused research question to how to take notes to how to disagree productively in a conversation or a debate. So I think the, the big benefit of a La Escuela middle school education is that graduates develop the thinking skills to take their own curiosity seriously and the social emotional self-awareness to be both open to and critical of new ideas and new perspectives. I would like to introduce you to a grade eight student, Nick, uh, to see if Nick, uh, will, are you willing to share some favorite inquiry moments? Yeah, uh, from I your would love to. Yeah, so my name is Nick. I'm an eighth grade student. 
So inquiry is definitely the main thing or one of the main things that we focus on. And it, you can really tell that it's effective. It, you're able to understand topics uh, and you're able to apply them to real life scenarios. So every class that I take right now, they all use an inquiry-based approach. Uh, but there are a few classes I wanna highlight. One would have to be design class. So it's taught by Kiara Fortnetti. She's a great teacher. She's on the call. Uh, but so we follow a design cycle in that, cl in that class uh, and it's super inquiry focused. We go in depth into problems and figure out how to resolve them uh, right there. And not only that, we find solutions for them. Uh, and by the time uh, our unit is done, we have a whole presentation or project that you can see every minor detail uh, it's filled out. You can just tell how the inquiry was, uh, it was used um, because everything you thought of, and it wasn't just the teachers telling you what to do, you were putting your own ideas into the project, which really makes it your own. Uh, another class which really uses uh, inquiry would have to be Italian class. Uh, so right now we're studying uh, an author uh, named Giovanni Boccaccio. He wrote uh, the Decameron, uh, which is one of three really famous uh, Italian writing pieces from the 1300s. Uh, but we've been, inquiry has been put into place in Italian class this year uh, to an extended level from the past. Uh, so for example, last unit, we studied a play called La Locandiera, which was an Italian comedy. And instead of just uh, reading the play and figuring out the plot, we looked into the uh, the minor themes in it, so like sexism, social positions, and at the end we modernized a few scenes from that play. We could really see how those themes uh, occur in modern society. So it's not only just understanding what's going on; it's applying them to real life scenarios, which is what the MYP does really well. It helps you understand, uh, and so you can use them beyond your middle school years. Thanks, Nick. I think, uh, I don't know if I'm transitioning Paolo or not, but I think we want to introduce uh, Neelam Kanduri. Thank you, Jack. Hi, I'm Neelam. I take um, middle school maths and science. Um, when we say maths, it's like, a, oh my God, how is that? And just now uh, Nick was sharing, we are inquiry based, our program. What is that inquiry it looks like in maths? Are we not learning algebra? Are we not learning trigonometry? Are we not learning, you know, data and a statistic? We do. We do learn in a way a project base, uh, the inquiry base. It's like, you know, a student come up, they, with the curiosity, the questions they want to know, they wonder about, and then comes the purpose of learning. So without purpose, I would say that is the difference between this program when we say inquiry based. It's a purpose before we getting into the learning and the learnings we take with the different ways. It's a hand on activities, it's a research, it's investigation. Sometimes it is sciences, so it is experimental, you know, experimenting, trying, doing, discovering on the way, and then concluding and then presenting those things, their findings. And that learning remains permanent with the students. That's the purpose of inquiry. I'm talking for both the subjects, math and science right now. You can look here on the screen, you can see those three uh, pictures I have selected out of thousands. Uh, I have so many on my um, phone every day. I click at least 50 pictures. The first one is the uh, algebra introduction in grade six. And uh, if I'm not wrong, Nick was there in this group when uh, this activity was going on. And it's like coding how we, uh, we use different color of beans and then transfer that understanding to algebra. So making sense, unknown, what is that unknown variable when we talk about, and then learning, you know, getting more deeper inside the algebra and finding it out. Second 
picture is the one where we are preparing for our uh, standardized test, SSAT preparations and all those. So we do have the regular practices of math. The third one you can see, they are preparing a clinometer because they are working, going to work, use that clinometer to use it for trigonometry. So they're preparing. So different kind of activities are there, different hand-on activities are there. So those kind of experiences are there. They come up on the way, they, they come up there with their questions and then they start looking for it. They don't get answer from the teacher. As a teacher, I'm not a bank of knowledge. I'm just a facilitator. They will be one who will be exploring out. They will be one finding it out. So it's their research work. They will come and share it out. May I have the second slide, please? Thank you. Uh, this is our science classroom. First one is in the lab where MYP student is sharing their learning to the younger one, to the PYP. So it's like whatever they have learned, they share their understanding with the lower classes also. The second image, you can see the presentation of their findings is going on. The third one is a demo of experiment on the table. They have set up the uh, material to conduct an experiment and they have the slide on the top. You can see they are explaining their findings, what they have discovered. And uh, this is the way how we learn. So this is not like something we give it to them. This is what they want to know. They frame it, they design it, and then we move forward in that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neelam. Um, I have to say my son was fortunate enough to have Neelam as his uh, math and science teacher and uh, the excitement to see him come home and there was always an experiment they my were doing. Pleasure doing this and the other it's just so exciting and engaging so um anyway without uh, further ado i'd like to introduce you to um our um uh language um teacher middle school language teacher and uh, um myp la language coordinator um, carmen gomez who's going to tell us about our language program prego carmen Grazie, paola ciao a tutti um i am going to be speaking to you generally about languages this evening, but I teach Italian specifically. Um, and at La Scuola, we offer three different languages at all different levels. So students uh, have a primary language that they learn, a second language. So it can either be Italian or Spanish, uh, but they also learn a third language. So they take classes in all three languages every week. Um, so language learning in the MYP is more about an interaction with the world. So we're trying to have students reflect on the languages they speak as a mechanism uh, through which and by which they create their own identities. So the, this can look very different in different levels uh, of Italian. I think Nick explained our, our advanced Italian class very well. So I don't know if I can beat him at that. We did, uh, we do things like adaptation, uh, performance. Um, we do regular school stuff like uh, literary analysis, but we're also looking at the ways uh, that language and literature can help us reflect on our own experiences, narrate who we are, describe the environments that we inhabit um, and explore a number of different cultures to really become citizens of the world, of the human race. And so these are our shared experiences. Um, I guess I just wanted to say in our, like a beginning level class, uh, it looks very different. Uh, students have to learn the same kind of communication uh, that they would learn in any language class. However, we're not memorizing vocabulary or um, just studying uh, verb conjugations, we're looking at how we use language uh, to, to, like I said, narrate ourselves or describe our experiences in different uh, contexts. So a beginning level Italian class might have students, um, actually one of the, our units walks students through learning from zero, um, two verbs, articles, nouns, and adjectives so that they could describe themselves as students and this, describe the school that they attend. And then they were able to use that knowledge to create a, a Facebook blog post introduction to themselves and to their school. So we're always looking at ways for students to interact with language and not just speak it. I 
think that's it. Grazie, Carmen. I am now going to introduce um, Melina Madrigal. She is uh, our humanities uh, teacher, amongst other things. I'll let her introduce herself. Thanks so much, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Buonasera a tutti. I'm Melina Madrigal. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the DEI director and the humanities instructor. And I'll speak to you right now about our humanities program. It is a inter an interdisciplinary course uh, combining language and literature and individuals and society. Um, the way we run it, it, the way I run it, is that our classes begin Really, we start every unit, kind of what Doug was saying, like it's an inquiry based model. So really starting out with understanding what what students, what the questions are that the students have, like what do they want to learn out of this? What do they know? Do you mind going back to that slide? Thanks. And, and, and what they're eager to find out. And what I love about it is that the, the learning is so dynamic that we, I could do the same unit over and over again, and it will never look the same, absolutely never, because of who I have in front of me and where they want to take the inquiry. So it really is, you know, it's a wonderful process for us educators as well to keep us on our toes. And that comes back to like, we're learning from them because it's, we're shifting and pivoting and, and supporting them in these quests to learn what they're trying to figure out. And that's what makes the learning really valuable. You know, I was reflecting on this the other day about how much you know, traditional schools of you know, learn, regurgitate, and, and that's it. And, and the fact that we're asking students to think really can't be underestimated, really think and, and ask them to guide the inquiry. Um, and then we get a lot of freedom. So for one, well, one of my favorite units was studying documentaries. And this was done a few years ago. And, and Nick was there, Mateo was there, so they know too. And, um, you know, rather than just watching some documentaries, which we did and analyzing them, looking at, which we did, we, we decided to make a documentary. And this is with fifth and sixth graders, a combination. And I remember I was at a training and they said, you're ludicrous, what are you thinking? Fifth graders, I was like, you just watch us. And we did. And to watch my students go through this process of concepting the idea, ideating everything, contacting people in the neighborhood to interview, to involve in the process, watch them go through this really formal process, learning those skills, learning collaboration, um, and making this project, and it also re reflected our Reggio Emilia approach, where this project, it was a year-long project, and that's what Reggio Learning looks like. Like, let's learn, and, and it's complete when it's completed, and it was wonderful. It was a cross-department um, collaboration. Chiara was there helping, and, and for me, that was really one of the units that just symbolizes everything we're trying to do. We're trying to think of the skills we want our students to learn, knowing what they need to know in this world to be successful and almost working backwards to help them get there. So I'll stop there. I think I, I could go on for a while. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Grazie mille, Melina. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now you've heard from an eighth grader. Thank you, Nicholas. And uh, now we have another guest student, uh, our seventh grader, Matteo. Matteo, prego, tell us a little bit about your experience at La Scuola. What are you like to share? Um, yeah, hello, I'm Matteo and I'm in seventh grade um, and I've been at La Scuola for most of my life. Um, so I'm here to tell you a little bit about, um, again, the inquiry process at La Scuola, but also how the connection between teachers um, and students and how that is really great. Um, so the teacher-student relationship at La Scuola is a fundamental building block, if you will, of your child's education. Um, so having a creative understanding and inspiring teacher um, is what, when they graduate from college, your children will remember of middle school. Um, and at La Scuola, we believe that the best and most memorable kind of information is one child can find in their own line of thought. And this is um, repeated a lot um, tonight, but it's really important because hand in, handing facts to students doesn't really stimulate their mind and creativity, like finding it out themselves, um, how finding them out themselves does. Um, we do a lot of research-based learning where we have a prompt, but then every student has some liberty of thought um, or on what path to take. And we, had a, we end up with a really wide variety of, um, of products. Um, so like, this is really great because we, we won't have everyone that wrote the same exact essay um, in the same way of thinking. We have 
a really big variety of different ideas that get shared and developed. And we really learn a lot in the classroom. Um, this prepares us for the real world much better, but there are a lot more scenarios in our minds to develop rather memorizing information, um, just repeating it. Um, but it doesn't mean that teachers don't have a vibrant classroom presence because we have a because we have a rather small class size as each student develops a unique report with their teacher. Um, the teacher has a guiding and really important role in the learning experience at La Scuola. Um, they support the students um, with thoughtful insight on their education and empower all students to share and try their really their hardest in class. Um, our teachers also offer an invaluable insight onto how to be a better person in this world in general and really model that every day um, when they come into the classroom and um, teach us re really important things. Um, and this is um, this really um, um, brings on our, our motto at La Scuola um, of like we're open to the world and we want to be um, become citizens of the world. Um, and our, our teachers really role model how to do that. Um, and in the end, the teachers also end up learning a lot from their students in similar ways that their students do from them. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mateo. Okay. And I, it's amazing listening to the students speak. I'm going to hand this back over to Doug. Thanks, <clears throat> Nicole. I think I'm going, to, I'm going to talk, we're going to keep talking about learning, but in the context of ateliers. And the atelier is a, is a key concept of a Reggio school. Uh, and it means something more than a workshop or a case. Uh, and a, a Reggio school and atelier is a, a commitment to a certain style of hands on learning. And uh, in Escuela Middle School, we are intentionally, explicitly hands-on in a range of our academic subjects that we want to talk about now. So we're going to share about several areas in the program where we take it seriously. I think, oh yeah, here we are. I'm going to talk about our environmental and garden studies program. Uh, in environmental studies in middle school, all students engage uh, in this program weekly in all three years of the middle school program and environmental inquiries um, <clears throat> take place primarily in our campus teaching garden and um, students are actively co-creating and cultivating that garden so if you could see in the photograph here you know they built the garden with uh, saws and shovels and a bunch of other good stuff uh, it's a hands-on outdoor science class where students learn through close observation and through careful and caring interaction with the natural world. And uh, in environmental studies, we, we zoom out into really big topics like climate change, fire ecology, and drought, things that are directly affecting our world today. But we also inquire in really focused ways. You know, for example, students are understanding the life cycle of a plant through very close observation from a seed, through the entire life of the plant to the compost pile. Uh, and so environmental studies is, in my sense of it, a really signature element of our middle school science program. Uh, I'm going to introduce Chiara Fornetti. Ciao a tutti, buonasera. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, my name is Chiara and I am the design teacher and the technology coordinator. So uh, what is design? Uh, as Nick has already said, design is the subject in which we kind of like apply and we introduce the concept of design thinking. So we try to solve problems, but what I really like about design is that we try to apply the design cycle that is divided in four main phases that are inquiring and analyzing, developing ideas, creating a solution and evaluating in all uh, uh, real life problems. So right now my students are actually working, my eighth graders are actually working on organizing our winter music concert. And my seven graders are um, exploring the concept of architecture and my six graders are working on creating something new for the whole middle school uh, environment. And, you know, we all said about, you know, La Scuola is about inquiry, but another thing that I think is really, really important about 
you know, Scuola is the way we collaborate, not only with our students, but between, between teachers. So the beauty of being the design teacher is that actually I can collaborate and I collaborate a lot with my, my uh, colleagues. So right now I'm collaborating with Milam and we are applying some math and science concept on our with some with my sixth grader students and i'm collaborating with melina and carmen in creating an amazing uh teatro day for our students so we're gonna build some theater we're gonna build some costume and so it's gonna be very very fun and so um while i'm here i'm also gonna talk about technology we truly believe at la scuola that you know we are in a world in which we are we, we use technology every day and it's uh, we need to we truly believe in the intentional use of technology so starting actually pre-k we have a curriculum that goes on uh, through eighth grade and my students learn how to code they start we introduce the concept of html css and javascript and in middle school especially we introduce uh, some apps of the Adobe Creative Cloud, such as Photoshop and Premiere Pro and uh, InDesign. So the fact that some years ago we were able to do a documentary, we did that through Premiere Pro and it was a great project actually. We can move on. Um, I think we have some other uh, slides. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna also talk about art. Uh, Jane, our, our teacher and my colleague couldn't be here today, but so art is also the place in which our students go in a specific room called Atelier. This is a place in which our students can actually learn by doing and they engage in different kind of arts. So they explore different kind of languages. And I think that art is really one of the subjects in which we can also highlight the uh, connection between uh, IB and Reggio Emilia. So the idea that uh, our students and us, we all uh, um, express our ideas and our opinions in different languages. And by different languages, we mean different ways of communicating. And throughout the atelier and art, uh, our students can actually communicate their ideas also in this way, not only by writing or speaking or listening, but they also do that. And so art is really a moment in which they explore different kind of um, uh, of languages, not only like painting or, you know, sculpture or something like that. It really goes beyond and there is a great, great uh, projects going on. Another art that we have here at La Scuola, we have a great project about music, I think, is the next slide. Yep. So starting in pre-K actually here at La Scuola, we have an amazing music project, um, sorry, music curriculum and um, uh, they do music twice a week in middle school and our maestro Carlo is uh, um, a great teacher and every student in middle school uh, has um, studied an instrument and so as you can see here they start by you know doing uh, rhythm and then it goes even like on uh, the concept of musicianship and then it goes into the creating a, actually a music process journal throughout the whole grade eight and um, they, as we were saying, you know, right now I'm actually collaborating with my grade eight students and the music teachers to create a winter music concept in which um, all our students are going to perform in front of the Scuola community. So it's a great uh, moment and a great um, moment of joy for the whole school. Grazie, Chiara. Uh, Paola and Nicole, I think I forgot to make a Atelier on Democracy and Culture slide. That's so okay. I'm just about it. I stopped sharing so we can see your face. Thank you. Uh, the last place in which we are really committed in an explicit way to this Atelier concept in the middle schools, we have a, a weekly Atelier on Democracy and Culture. And it's a space and time when students and teachers get together and interact as active citizens and producers of culture. But it's our school mission that we're going to shape the future, that we want to do that. So we, like, we need to, to give time and space for that to happen. And uh, in this time, it's, it's not a taught class. It's not a study hall or a homework time at all. You're off task if you're doing homework. It's really a, a time when students generate projects based on their own political and aesthetic interests. Uh, and students have formed bands and rehearsed music. They've organized protests on behalf of the environment. Um, they've advocated for the rights of girls and women, for animals, against gun violence. 
uh, they've taught each other science and practiced new art forms in the atelier. Uh, so ultimately, it's that place where we are testing whether this big idea we have as a school works. Whether, like, if you just clear the space, kids who know how to inquire will do inquiry and will act to shape the future. Um, it doesn't work every day, but it's a pretty good idea and it's energizing uh, when it works at a high level. I want to transition now to introduce, I think we're introducing Mario, si. who is going to talk to us about physical education, health, and athletics. Thanks, Sal. Hello, everyone. Ciao tutti. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Mario Rossetti. I'm the athletic director. Uh, I also teach uh, PE for fourth to eighth grade. So I'll be talking about both quickly. I also won't take too long. Um, and so, so our physical education is physical education and health. Um, we follow the IB curriculum. So we do uh, team sports, international sports, individual body movement, which we focus on change of direction, change of speed, balance, uh, being able to jump, run, crawl. Um, and in addition to that, we also put our health component in there in which students are doing uh, inquiry, working on different topics such as understanding carbs, understanding fats, sugar, uh, eating for energy. And so being in this uh, type of environment, and as someone who's been in this field for 15 years, it's a phenomenal environment to be in because students really take in the inquiry uh, environment in which they are uh, given in my classes, they're given minimal instruction and given opportunities to really take that instruction and build it with it. So, uh, for example, they'll be given quick two minute uh, introduction of what the topic's going to be and put into the environment to work with it. And with that, it's been great because students have been able to collaborate, um, ask questions, support each other, and they really take the ownership of the class. And that's both, again, for our uh, health topics and our physical education focus. Uh, for athletics, we uh, focus on seasons. So we do a volleyball for our fall season. Winter, we do basketball. Uh, and then for spring, we do our futsal and we do track and field. Uh, and so we're every year working with our students and trying to figure out what other sports they'd be interested in and looking to incorporate them. Uh, one addition that we've added that's a bit unique to other schools is a performance training program where it's kind of geared as a one-on-one -on -one training for the students. Uh, they do a workout in small groups. They wear a Fitbit where we can track their workout, how they're doing for the miles, their steps, heartbeat. Uh, they do, we do weekly check-ins with them just to make sure they're hitting their goals. Uh, and we do some film stuff with them. So they film themselves doing a workout and we work with them on that. So again, having this mentality, the, the idea in this environment of inquiry base is huge because our students, unlike in many other areas, really take the ownership of both their physical education, health, and also uh, for their athletics. Thanks, Mario. I'm gonna just uh, share quickly about experiential learning in the middle school. Well, in each of the three middle school, we are committed to doing travel and learning together. Uh, and this has been disrupted by COVID-19, but this is the big idea. In uh, grade six, we spend a week in Yosemite, uh, partnering with an organization called Nature Bridge. Uh, and we, it is a much larger inquiry in the humanities and science program. Uh, and so we've, we've looked at things like fire ecology uh, in the forest. In grade seven, our intention, and this has been disrupted by COVID, is to have a five-day service learning program so that will allow students to understand um, sort of the design cycle around community service before they do their grade eight community service projects. We'll do that together as a group uh, in a, in a off-campus way. And in grade eight, all students spend uh, 10 days or two weeks uh, doing an Italian immersion program in Italy, going back to the, the roots that inspire the school. Uh, and that too has been disrupted by COVID, although we've planned the trip twice uh, and we're really looking forward to doing it next year. Uh, our next slide is, oh yeah, 
positive and inclusive culture. I just I just want to speak more broadly about like how we are supporting all students. That it is our intention to have a positive and inclusive culture, and all middle school students are doing advisory two times a week. It's a time when we develop routines. We have uh, open and anonymous conversations for open sessions where we are really explicit about learning about one another and learning how to communicate better with one another, dealing with conflict, uh, also dealing with essential things that are developmentally appropriate to middle schoolers, puberty education, drug education, uh, stress management through mindfulness and yoga, and just doing uh, small group and one-on-one -on -one wellness check-ins. Uh, and in addition to the team of advisors who do this, we have, we have a social emotional learning specialist and a learning specialist uh, who really are partnering with both teachers and students to come in and co-teach lessons, uh, to work one-on-one -on -one with students, uh, to ensure that when students have needs, we're meeting those needs in unique ways uh, and that we can be all aware of one another's needs and support one another. That's our goal as a middle school community. Uh, is this uh, you, Molina? Yes. Grazie. Good evening. Thanks, Doug. Good evening again. I'll speak to you about our diversity, equity, inclusion program quickly. I am the director of DEI at La Scuola. And essentially, DEI is how we, we take care of each other and take care of ourselves. Um, take care of those who are in our community and also those who are not represented in our community. So knowing our identities and, and really it's wonderful to be at an international school because already we're bringing in so many different backgrounds, perspectives and cultural uh, understandings and, and working together to understand and make sure that everybody needs uh, has what they need to, to thrive and, and do their best. Um, so in our DEI program, Really what I love about this, because it is its own department, but it's it's in every single aspect of everything we do. You know, we're in close partnership with SEL. It's, it's present in student life, in curriculum, in admissions, in uh, our professional relationships, faculty relationships with the parents. Um, so really it's kind of this omnipresent um, lens in, in the way we look at the world and the way we understand the world around us and each other. And some of the examples, if you will, for student life, for instance, we have a, a gender and sexuality alliance in the middle school, and it's led by a phenomenal student who's really driven it forward, uh, really taken the reins, and this is also our student DEI leader as well. Um, and then we have affinity groups for both our faculty and for our um, students. And um, I'm also really proud of the fact that we've implemented a couple years ago a, a curriculum, a permanent fixture in our curriculum of a racial literacy curriculum. It's called the Pollyanna curriculum. And you can actually, the, the Pollyanna, they had received a grant a few years back in order to make it um, completely free. And it's, it's a K through eight curriculum. And it really, you know, goes developmentally appropriately, age appropriately learning not only the truth about um, our history, our, and especially in a time when critical race theory, and, and it's such a We can't hear you, Melina. Sorry. Oh, you're frozen. Ay, ay, ay. No, Melina is frozen. Yeah, I'm supposed to be able to talk about this. You know, Mateo can. Uh oh, can you hear me? We can now. Yeah, you're back, frozen. Melina. I was going to say, Mateo can attest to this, you know, we just had a talk about, it, it, you know, I obviously, and I know other teachers, it comes out whether we're actually teaching a Pollyanna curriculum unit. Um, so, for instance, the Pollyanna can go from kindergarten where you're looking at your identity and it's a celebration of skin color. So it's looking in at the, the inner identity and a celebrating that to really build that foundation before, you know, we get into more difficult topics. Um, down the line. So by the time you get to eighth grade, you're learning about institutional racism, uh, mass incarceration. So really building this foundation of self-identity, love, and, and respect for others before moving into those um, topics. And, and what I was saying, like, Mateo, we just had a talk on cultural competency the other day. So really weaving this, I was talking to my sixth graders today about how we're, talk, we're reading the book Mouse um, and talking about how mm -hmm. Hitler was influenced by the eugenics of the United States, and, you know, so bringing like DE is just constantly present in bringing that knowledge and awareness into our um, into everything we do really. 
Um, and we're currently, I also want to just say this, if you haven't heard the 21 day anti-racist challenge, like for instance, our faculty, um, some of the members are committed to, I mean, everyone's committed, but some of them have decided to join this challenge where every day we look into some kind of uh, article or podcast to build our, our racial understanding um, and to be able to better engage in conversations about it to, to make this a more anti-racist world. So I am here for more questions. I, there's a lot to say on this subject, but I'm gonna stop there so we can find time. Thank you. Thank you, Melina. Okay, I'm gonna take this slide and talk a little bit about our parent associ association, which is called PALS, um, which stands for Parents Association La Escuela. Um, and so what that is, it's a group of amazing parents that um, essentially are um, supporting the, the building of community um, within our schools. So um, the, they are volunteering and coordinating events, um, large and small um, across all grades. And um, it's a, a wonderful uh, opportunity to stay connected with other um, families within your class or um, just across the school. And um, you get to partner with admissions um, uh, for a number of different events. That's always fun to partner with me and Paula. Um, and um, that is our PALS. Um, so our, we have a vibrant uh, parent community. Unfortunately, our, our PALS um, co-chair couldn't be with us tonight. Um, she speaks uh, lovely about it and she's fantastic. I'm gonna keep us moving and we're gonna talk about high school counseling now. I think that's me. Mm -hmm. We counsel kids and they go to high school. That's the short of it. Uh, high school counseling starts in the second half of grade seven. And this has changed because COVID has changed uh, standardized testing and has changed sort of the routine about how kids prepare for that. Uh, but we are in close partnership with the many independent and public schools in the city uh, and make sure that representatives of those schools are able to share their presentations and uh, communicate with our students. So students have a very good sense of what their options are. Uh, and then in grade eight, in uh, we use every time really to help students work on doing their research, inquiring into what kind of schools they want to go to and uh, writing essays and short answers and practicing interviews. Uh, and it's a pretty smooth process. Uh, and we've had both good success in the three years that we've done it. And um, just, uh, I, it hasn't been very stressful. I mean, people like to talk about how stressful it is to apply to high school, um, but I think uh, we're doing it pretty well. That's all I'm gonna say about it. What's Thank next? you very much, Doug. And as a parent of a graduate, I would say that yes, you did a great job. Thank you very much. Now, from a parent of a graduate to another, I'm here to introduce you to Lama Nachman, <laughs> a fellow parent and uh, actually the board chair of La Scuola. Prego, Lama. Hello, everyone. And I, I second that fully. I think Doug does an unbelievable job at that, and we're all grateful for it. Um, so I'm Lama Nachman, I'm the board co-chair, and I am the mom of a La Scuola alum. Uh, my son Keenan joined um, La Scuola in first grade and graduated last year, and he's now at International High School. Um, and when I'm not doing the thing that I love the most, which is be part of this La Scuola community, I actually run a research lab um, at Intel, uh, which is a really multidisciplinary team um, that researches um, the collaboration between humans and uh, artificial intelligence. So I would say that I have a lot to say about multidisciplinary education. And I think this unique combination that La Scuola brings with Reggio and IB and the interdisciplinary learning in a context that's truly relevant to the students and just integrates into everyday life is something that really sets them up for success into the future. And frankly, our ultimate belief in the high image of the child continues to be validated every single day. And I'm sure you guys have seen a glimpse of this with Matteo and Nicholas uh, talking earlier today. I think honestly, many of the challenges that we see in the world today can really only be solved with thinking through multiple disciplines and I and you know you've probably seen some of these trends actually happening in universities and offering all of these multidisciplinary uh, degrees that you know are new. Um, 
one of the things that I really are amazing about La Scuola and they shine in this approach because you really have to have an exceptional leadership and faculty that can make this happen. This is not the easiest way to teach. You've heard um, fantastic examples from Chiara tonight and from Doug, and really the amount of energy and collaboration between the faculty to make something like this happen is, is very hard to do. And, and yet at La Scuola is just natural. And it's because of the amazing team that we have. Um, you know, Doug has spoken about how we've graduated you know, over the last two years, um, our eighth graders who went on to be extremely successful in their high schools. And we you know, continue to hear from those schools and we see them thrive in these environments because of this amazing um, you know, education that they've had here at La Scuola. So finally, I just wanna, I would be remiss if I don't mention this. I think this is an unbelievably nurturing environment. It's a very connected community and I'm really lucky to be part of this community that truly feels like a family. I came in here looking for an education for my child and I'm still here, I didn't even leave, but I'm here with a family. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have later, um, but uh, thank you all for coming tonight and um, we hope to welcome you all to La Scuola. I think Courtney is next. <laughs> Thanks, Valentina. Um, I am, uh, I'm Courtney Brown. I'm a parent and a board member. Uh, I have two girls, a fourth grader and an eighth grader. Um, we've been at the school for about a year and a little over a year, year and a half. And so we've not only gone through the high school process um, and continue to go through it, but um, I can speak a little bit, as my wife said, she said, I wanna remind you of a couple things, keep it brief, and uh, what does your Zoom background look like? I'll, I'll try the first one uh, to keep it brief because my Zoom background, you know, is it's not the wine, cheese, and uh, and a uh, great conversation that we necessarily had when we when we were looking at schools. Um, which I, I wish you could all experience that because you get a little a little flavor of all of the uh, La Scola families and and uh, and faculty. Um, what what is what makes it special for my daughters my daughters and my family specifically my eighth grader i would i would say they're you know it's it's what what brings the joy into their daily lives and you know a uh, since my 13 year old's not here i can say bringing joy into a 13 year old's life uh, on a daily basis not so easy um you know they're uh, they're kind of i won't say moody but uh they're teenagers um and so I would say that she definitely, she has that. And the things that I think she has found, the couple things just to highlight a few, um, just a few, and I won't, I won't name names of, of teachers and faculty because I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I could go on, but um, she bumps into one of her mentors and faculty members as she walks around the neighborhood with her friend on, you know, I would say weekly basis. And that's pretty cool to see one of your teachers uh, almost almost in their own their own uh, uh, their own environment. She uh, another another uh, teacher or uh, faculty member took her aside when she was writing her essays and said, "Okay, here's the plan. You're going to come to me with your essays, and I want you to sit and write for 25 minutes, and then stop, and then send me the essay." And uh, it was a great exercise for her to kind of, uh, I won't say it was always easy, but, but, uh, um, but I thought that was a pretty cool approach. And uh, the third is uh, another one of her teachers. Um, she, she decided that the, she saw the school lunch not always being eaten by her, by her classmates and decided that she was going to figure out where the, where the lunches could go and where they could be used. So there's a, a, there's a homeless shelter in the neighborhood and so she goes and you know got all of her classmates to to uh, put together kind of a roster of people to deliver to bring the uh, unused uneaten lunches to the mission hotel down the street and one of her uh, one of her teachers is i would say kind of like a mentor and that helps her troubleshoot and walks walks with her walks with someone to the mission hotel it's not not exactly the uh, the nicest walk i'll be honest um, and uh you know, I would say the other couple things that bring joy into her, her daily life. Um, Doug mentioned the Yosemite trip. It was kind of a transformational 
trip for not only my daughter but uh, but all the all the uh, eighth graders and seventh and seventh graders, and then um, and then Dolores Park Field Day is another is another thing that she loves. So I would say those are just kind of the three, four, or five things that that uh, bring joy into her day, daily life. And I will at that stop, and I will also answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Courtney. I am um, uh, aware that we are three minutes past the hour, um, and I appreciate uh, everybody hanging here with us, but we do wanna just leave a little room here for some questions. Um, Parents, there's a handful of you, so feel free to unmute yourselves if you have any burning questions for any of our amaz amazing educators here. Hi, we have a question. Um, this is Coleman. Hi. He's looking at sixth grades. He's in a Spanish immersion program right now, but doesn't speak any Italian yet. So is kind of interested in, um, what would that look like in terms of starting a new language and continuing Spanish for him? You wanna take that Dr. Gomez or should I answer it? I can do it. So weekly he would be taking uh, about five hours of Spanish, advanced Spanish. Um, and then we would tack on an additional two hours per week of beginning Italian. So he and his classmates would most likely be with me in a very small classroom, um, learning the basics of Italian, uh, which once students are making connections and especially establishing what the differences are between the two languages. So they interact very easily. Being able to identify what the differences are allows students to uh, kind of differentiate between the two but also jockey back and forth between the two romance languages rather than turning back to English as this kind of intermediary. So um, within the, by the end of the first unit in beginning Italian this year, uh, my sixth graders wrote a probably 200 word letter uh, as a summative. Um, in which they really only had to use two verbs in the present tense, articles, nouns, and adjectives. And they were able to put together some, some really good stuff. And they're now, actually, we had a, a really fun moment in beginning Italian today when um, one of my students who's been around since fifth grade actually went to make a comment and then he stopped himself and started to make his comment in Italian. And it took him a little while to get through it, but that's always a big moment when students want to spontaneously express themselves in their target language. So it would, in short, language three, Italian, that'll be your fun, your fun class. Like, it's just a ton of fun. Thank you, Carmen. And thank you for the question. That's a great question. So I see another hand raise. Um, Juan, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Juan. This is Sophia. Um, so I had a question about the kind of non-academic uh, subjects. Um, I, I saw the, that the music program was uh, quite serious. So I was wondering um, if kids in general, they, they do sports and theater and music at the school, but they, they kind of like don't need to do anything, no, no clubs, no, no music teaching outside the school, or, or are there kids that do both? And then how do you um, organize the class with those kids? Great, well, I'll give you a response to that. Many of our students do both sports and arts outside of school. Uh, however, like a student can come into the middle school without having played an instrument and, and will have an opportunity to try multiple different instruments and take up an instrument for middle school. Uh, and that just doing the course with Maestro Dean is going to lead that student to proficiency in that instrument by the end of middle school. Uh, I think Mario could speak to the sports. Actually, uh, Sally Peterson, our director of teaching learning, is also our basketball coach, can speak to the fact that you know you can start and you can play a, a middle school sport without any prior experience in the sport, uh, and you'll be welcomed uh, in the same way that you'd be welcomed if you were an advanced player in the sport. Where really have a fully inclusive approach 
to athletics. Uh, and I, maybe I'll leave it to Sally or to Mario if you want to say something more about involvement in the extracurriculars. I just yeah, want to say one, one other thing. One, like, uh, one of the things that comes out of the Atelier on Democracy and Culture is students starting clubs. Uh, and so our, our sort of club scene uh, is a little bit on the down low because of COVID. Uh, and because we're a young, small school, but that is so definitely something that is growing uh, in the school. And so that we'll be building over the the next year. Go ahead, Mario. Sorry. I know. Um, I wanted to hit both of those pieces is the um, doing music and athletics. We we would collaborate also. Uh, so Carlo, who's the director of, for the music area, and then myself for the sports, we would work together to try to figure out a schedule that would work for the student. Um, and on the athletic side, like Doug said, it's a very inclusive program. We don't do cuts. Uh, we work, and again, Sally is our basketball coach. Uh, we have a really good volleyball coach. We have a good uh, track and field and futsal coach. And the idea is that they learn the sport, that they build their community with their team, which brings them closer together. And we always ask, you know, try stuff new, try a bunch of new stuff as much as possible. We create that environment for students to try. At the same time, the students who are more competitive we help to try to create that environment for them too, kind of push them a bit um, and to support. So we work with both of those groups. The only thing I'd added around the sports and then um, I think Mario for his design is um, the after school sports program is one hour a day, twice a week. So a student can go straight from their dismissal. We walk over in this case for volleyball or basketball, right around the corner to the gym. We have this very intensive hour and they step out, out and they might have another project in that afternoon or family engagement. Um, so it's a very, um, not only inclusive, but very um, manageable um, program that makes it very, um, you know, interesting for everyone. Like students are eager to try it out because it, it's manageable. Thank you, Sally. And uh, don't forget, we have a student still here. Thank you for staying here. I know you have a uh, fun and fantastic things to do in the evenings and our teachers also, um, especially during time when they're writing reports. So, you know, very grateful for that. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're quite, quite short on time, but, you know, we can squeeze another question if, uh, you know, if you would like to ask any questions to our group. No? <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can think of a question sometimes. I mean, not, uh, some, some people don't like to ask questions in front of a large group. So please, if you have any question that, that you can think of after this meeting or you want to ask us, please email admissions. Yes. They will be very happy to connect you to the right person. Um, I would like to thank everyone here tonight, especially our two guest students, Matteo and Nick. Uh, grazie mille, siete stati bravissimi. Yeah. Thank you. I, thank I you was wondering you. whether Coleman had a question. I felt like he got something to say. We do have one more question. <laughs> yeah, right. I wanted to ask about um, the homework. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we have homework. <laughs> We do, we do. It, it's not, I don't think it's unmanageable, but I will let the students un answer yeah. that and we can all clo close our ears so you can get a real answer here. Matteo and Nick, go ahead. Yeah, I can answer this one. Yeah, so like Raleigh just said, the homework is very manageable. Uh, I think the most we'll ever have is maybe two hours at the max. And that's only, it's a very, like an odd situation. The only time that probably would happen is when we have like three final projects at once. We really have to put a lot of effort into all of those in one night. But usually I would say I have like 30 minutes to an hour of homework. Uh, and tonight I only have one assignment that I have to finish. So it's, it's very manageable uh, and it's very flexible. And the teachers are also very flexible about homework. If you really can't get an assignment done, uh, they're really understanding about it as long as you make it up later. And, and the yeah. yeah, and the teachers really work hard to make to make sure the assignments aren't um, are, are are really are, are really engaging and really um, um, push you out of your comfort zone, but also um, they're they're always there to guide you. Um, and so in the end, the homework um, is actually really interesting. Um, and you learn a lot.
Good answer, boys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, La Scuola teachers and, and, and everyone and admissions for putting uh, this event together. Thank you so much, parents, for attending. We, we hope uh, some of you have been at school and we hope we can welcome uh, again in person soon with the wine and cheese that Courtney was mentioning. We, uh, this used to be our signature event and we are sad that COVID has prevented us from doing so, but hopefully you, you will receive the Las Colas warmth at a later date and, uh, and we will be together again. Grazie mille. Arrivederci, buonasera. Uh,